All right, first and foremost, all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wawakakwadash. Peace, blessings, much respect to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be, or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth. To the rest of the church who believe as well, you men who may not be teachers or prophets, you women, sons, and daughters also. And the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever. Okay? This is the book of John chapter 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, what is this account speaking of? Let's hold this. Let's go to Numbers chapter 21 and verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord Yahweh and against thee. Pray unto the Lord Yahweh that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So, Yahweh Shai will raise like the serpent in the wilderness. Okay? Because those who would look upon it, after they were bitten, they would live. Let's go back to where we were. John chapter 3 and 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And this was done for the children of Israel, okay? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Somebody will see that word whosoever and say, see, everybody. Let's go into that word whosoever in Greek 39 and 56. The word is pas. It says, individually, each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, everything, right? So when you read that, you'll say, see, everyone on earth, everybody, everything. Well, if it was literally speaking of everybody on earth or everything, does that literally mean that the animals insects anyone who would um, believe wouldn't perish because everybody has opportunity well that's silly because for one it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life when you go to the book of um, what's that scripture Um, I think it's an Acts. Let's let's touch that. Acts chapter two, and verse twenty-one. And it shall come to pass that whosoever there's that word again shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this must mean you can be a gorilla, you could be an Edomite. You could be whoever. If somehow, some way, you can call upon the name. Hey, you're good, right? Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, a man approved of the power among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which the power did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So the whosoever is speaking of Israel. So when you go back to John 3 and 15, that whosoever, remember, ye men of Israel, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Speaking to you Israelites, verse 16. For the power so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So just like in the wilderness, okay, when that serpent was risen up, well, Yahweh Shai is that serpent embodied, so to speak. That serpent was symbolic for Yahweh Shai. Okay? That was done towards the Israelites. That wasn't done for everybody. When you look at that account in John 3 and 14, that wasn't done for all nations in the world. That was done for the world of Israel. Now, going back to this, for the power so loved the world, let's go into that word world in Greek 28, 89. The word is cosmos. An apt and harmonious arrangement or constitution. In this case, that harmonious arrangement or constitution is the elect, okay? Order, government, that's the elect, starting with the men, right? Ornament, decoration, adornment, arrangement of the stars, the heavenly hosts, as the ornament of the heavens, the world, the universe, the circle of the earth, the earth. And that's not what it's speaking of in this reference because the word here is cosmos. All right. So this is about a body of people, a constitution, a order, a government of people. This isn't speaking of everybody. In this case, it's speaking of the elect of the nation of Israel. For the power so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, there's that word again, whosoever ye men of Israel, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so that whosoever goes into Israel. Now let's prove it again. Let's hold this. And let's touch on, um, is it Jeremiah? I don't think it's Jeremiah. It might be, um, what is that? Let's try Joel chapter 2, and I want to say it's 30, 32, Joel chapter 2 and verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, which is another nickname for Israel, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So the world is speaking of the remnant of Israel. The whosoever is speaking to you Israelites. Not everybody. Verse uh, John 3 and 17. For the power sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So that's speaking to who? That's speaking to the nation of Israel. All right. Now let's go to, um, what's that, Isaiah? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So again, the world is speaking of Israel. The whosoever is speaking of Israel, period, point blank. Verse 25, and the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. So through the elect, overall, all the elect, I mean, uh, through the elect, overall, all the nation of Israel are going to be saved through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai went to that cross for the world of Israel. Okay, Yahweh Shai came for the world of the Israelites. Now let's go back to the book of John. Chapter 18 and verse 20. Yahweh Shai answered him, I spake, open, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, and in the temple where the, the Jews always resort. And in secret, I have said nothing. 
So Yahweh Shai taught amongst the world of the Jews. <laughs> okay? He came for the world of the Jews. Let's read this again. John 18 and 20. Yahweh Shai answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple where the Jews always resort. So the world that he spoke openly amongst was amongst the Jews. Who are the Jews? Israelites. Okay? The southern kingdom. And in secret, I have said nothing. So the Lord spake openly to the world of Israel. Okay? So, touching on Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. So why would the Lord come for this world, but then he's saying be not conformed to this world? Because the world here is different. This is Greek, chapter 165. The word is uh, aeon, 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 excuse me, aeon. Forever, an unbroken age, perpetu perpetuity of time, eternity, the world's universe, period of time, age. So the world here is speaking of the same world that you find in Second Ezra chapter 6 and 9. The world that we had read going back to uh, John 3 and 16 is speaking of cosmos. So when you look at the word world, there's different definitions. Okay? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this already shows there must be more than one definition for world. Because if Yahweh Shai came for the world, but then we're not supposed to be conformed to the world, how does that make sense? It doesn't. Okay? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye be that ye may reprove what is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the power so the world is the world of Israel let's go to John again chapter 13 and verse 1 now therefore the feast of the Passover when Yahweh knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father having loved having loved his own which were in the world he loved them unto the end. So who was his own? His own are Israelites. Okay? Even more so, the elect of the Israelites. So the, the Lord did not come for all the world. He came for his own. So that's not every single person in the world. What I want to do, I want to pull out my Apocrypha. So let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, and verse 34. And this proves the Lord didn't come for all the world. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and there is also that dwell in the world. So this is speaking of the world as what many think John 3.16 is referring to. In this case, it's actually speaking of world as in globe, okay? And there is also that dwell in the world. So, and so shall my name nowhere be found but in Israel. So the Lord didn't come for all the world. He only came for the world of Israel. Throughout all the world, the only people the Lord is dealing with are the Israelites. Because the Lord didn't come for every single person on the earth. Okay? Plus, when you go to the book of Psalms, Chapter 68. I think this is it. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 98 and verse 9. Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. So if the Lord... Uh, if the Lord Yahweh sent Yahweh Shai to die for all the world, why is he coming to judge the world? Okay? Because the world that he's referring to is speaking of the elect of Israel, the body of the elect of Israel. 
James chapter 4 and verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of this world is the enmity with the power. So if Yahweh Shai came for the world, why is it saying here that the world is an enemy to God? So the world is an enemy to God, but yet the Lord came for his enemies? No, that's not what it's speaking of. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with the power? Whosoever, speaking to you Israelites, Therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the power, which proves there's no way John 3.16 is referring to everybody in the world, seeing that the world is an enemy of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So John 3 and 16, for the power so loved the world, the world of Israel, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is only for the nation of Israel. Okay? Period. And people really make this really hard to understand. But it's always been about Israel. It always will be. No matter how people try to slice it and dice it to make themselves more comfortable. You have to know the scriptures in terms of, you know... You have to read with understanding. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. So that already shows that John 3.16 must be some type of world that could have different meaning from what people think. Because we clearly see there's more than one world. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the power. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. So this word world, worlds here is aeon, Greek 165 again. Forever, an unspokable age, perpetuity of time, eternity, the world's universe, period of time, age. So there's more than one world. You have cosmos, okay, which is really a, uh, an arrangement or, or a group of people, a government body. You also have Aeon, which is like a period of time. Like right now, we're in the Aeon of Esau. You also have world as in globe or earth. Okay? So there's, there's different definition of worlds. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. So the ages were framed by the word of the power. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So there's more than one definition of world. It's simple. To this day, people still resort to John 3 and 16 as a safe haven to say, see, all nations can be saved. Not the case. I'm going to close it with John chapter 17 and verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And that's speaking of the government body, the cosmos, the world of the elect of Israel. Those belong to Yahweh Shai. Those are the ones he came for. That's the world Yahweh Shai came for in John 3.16. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Hold on. You just said you came for the world. <laughs> See? I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and give all thanks and praises unto our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Wa Rakakwadash. Shalom.